And do you still remember the first time we met? Wow, that seems like a long time ago. Yeah. Um, yes, I do, because I think it was for HTNK, for my company. Yeah. I started uh, like the one day shops in which we gave small labels the opportunity to sell for a day, a one day. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, you were one of them. Yeah. So this was really funny, but you were with the other guys as yeah. well. So uh, Daily Paper and Finning Pieces. I think, I think I was even a season after them. Yeah, so it started with Guillaume and, uh, and with Hussein and uh, with Jefferson. And Mama, yeah. And uh, they, Daily Paper, just they were a blog. Yes. So they, they just started a t-shirt line and was not even mentioned to be, uh, well, it was not the intention to become a label. Yeah. So it was just, yeah, yeah we got some t-shirts. Okay, can we sell it? Oh, whoa, yeah. everyone is buying it. Yeah. And then Guillaume, he started with the shoes and I still have his first pair of shoes. Whoa. So it's, st yeah. <laughs> it's still in, uh, in my house and I will keep it forever because it's a nice memory of something in which he started and I remember that the stock was in the living room of his mom. So it was like that. Yeah. And then you came one season after and I thought, he's, he's the brother of someone, but yeah. he's not. No. So it was also for me, it was the first time finding out that you got guys who actually support each other yeah. on starting a label in a different way than all the other ones I knew. Yeah. So that yeah. was, I think that was the beginning. Yeah. And uh, yeah, you started with the label. Yeah, I know that I think the first time when I started with the tenants that you also organized uh, a lot of press. So it was, uh, there was a lot of new things coming. So it was, um, yeah. I think it was uh, um, after lunch or something, uh, sometime I did two or three different interviews and I had to do a presentation about my brand and I think. That was one of the worst presentations I've ever <laughs> done in my life, but yeah, it's nice. And, uh, yeah, but it's also what I feel is that someone should give you the opportunity to get on stage and yeah. it's like the first stepping stone yeah. of something in which you might end up being a label or not. Yeah. So I always felt like starting the one day shop was a really great thing because on one side, HTNK, my company is doing recruitment for a lot of people helping them find jobs and assignments. Mm -hmm. And on the other side, you got a lot of people who want to start a label, yeah. but then people ask you, where do you sell? And you're like, okay, well, I do not sell that. And that was the time before the big internet hit. So yeah. on e-commerce, no so social media. No, yeah. there was nothing. We had a photographer and then in the end, you got two pictures at yeah. home. And the price <laughs> is amazing. Not yeah, there. yeah. No, that was, I think, a very big uh, start for the brands in the Netherlands that you see today. And you see a lot of people inspired by that, but maybe don't know this story. So that's why I wanted to share this. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> but also, um, everyone calls you the fashion uh, uh, mama, uh, mother of uh, of the Netherlands. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> how do you think you got that role? Or why, why, why do people call you like that? And well, you don't know unless you mention because I, I don't know. Uh, yeah. It's like that's the way it is. I got kids there. I'm the <laughs> mom of the yeah, kids, yeah. <laughs> so they're wearing your stuff now, which is really cool. And I also think that's nice. They are a new generation of people who don't have the background of and who don't know what I know mm -hmm. and they just support this, they can feel it, so it's really cool. And it's not because I'm in fashion, because kids don't off, uh, yeah, well, they basically, most of the time they don't like what the parents are doing. Yeah. So, okay, that's their own thing. But being the mom of, yeah, the thing is that, yeah, I like that. And at the same time, I also feel, I still feel re very young, mm -hmm. so it's, Although I, not, I might not look that way, I still feel my mind is really young. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think it's also the way I'm raised because my parents are 82 and 83. They're on social all the time. <laughs> well, if you want your likes to go up, yeah. you, you just c connect with all the elderly people <laughs> in Holland. They're like, oh. They're like you, I like it, <laughs> I like it. They like everything you do. And that's fun to see. They're completely onto social. So, and they're that old and they are in the world and this is how I feel as well. So 
being a mom on one side makes you a little bit wiser because you got more knowledge. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's also a lot of things which I thought would never happen, they can happen right now. So I'm really happy of also feeling young in a way. But they give you all the information of how fast things go in, in fashion or uh, what kind of things they will pick up if it's YouTube or if it's uh, uh, a new platform that they found out. Right. Information-wise, this young generation, something that's born yesterday, they already know today. Right. So I think that also keeps you young, I would yeah. say. But it's also, if you see revivals, for yeah. example, of the 80s and the 90s... They have no clue. Well, the thing is that, yeah. okay, I was in those days yeah. buying and designing and doing things, so I know all these labels. Yeah. So it's really fun to see that you get like a newer version, which I also like. Mm -hmm. Either it's in music or if, it, if it's in fashion or in design. Yeah. You see a lot of stuff which is inspired on that. And mm -hmm. I like combination of denim and sportswear. So, okay, I, and the classical stuff, some classical stuff as well. So for me, it's really great times. I think I, yeah, that's why I don't feel like mom. Yeah, I can see it because people say ooh to me. <laughs> it's like, oh, really? I'm that old? <laughs> I don't feel ooh at all. Yeah. But that's the way it is. And at the same time, what I like right now is that everything used to be like, if you wanted to start a label, mm -hmm. you, should, you should first work for a big brand. Yeah. Or at least they are the examples the of, system, yeah. Uh, yeah, of where you want to go. Yeah. Yeah. Right now, this. Everything is challenged by new business models. So I like that. It's something which I thought, oh no, you first have to start working somewhere. In 10 years, yeah, get back to me. Yeah. Okay, I will help you with this, but you can never grow. And now you can. Yeah. So it's so interesting that yeah. all the new things which are happening are really challenging old models. Yeah. But and what's the bad side of those old, uh, of like uh, the challenge of those old models and using it in a new way. So for example, if you look at Olaf Hussein, a younger brand that uh, did it actually in this new kind of way of thinking, um, there's a lot of pros, but what would be the cons, like the other side, where I should be aware of? Uh, yeah, well, let's first go to the pros, yeah. because honestly, I think you're very kind of like, you have a kind of vision and in a way, it's a rigid way of doing things. This yeah. is how you want to do it. Yeah. I can listen to you, or if I see what happened in the last couple of years, I sometimes wonder, I'm like, why? But you got like a strategy and a yeah. vision on something which is not based on models. You, can, you cannot teach this at school. That's the thing. Any marketing theory is old fashioned in a way. Yeah. And you're mm -hmm. challenging this in a way which is also you need to be stubborn everyone all designers will always say i'm eigenwijs they're yeah. always like stubborn on yeah. doing their own thing yeah. and sometimes you feel like oh but you don't have the connection to what the real world is like but you have so for me it's also interesting as an outsider looking in at that process and thinking okay why why are you not focusing on this? Why are you not opening up stores? Why are you not this? So you're challenging the old models yeah. in which you think, yeah, but you should open up stores, you should this, that, that. It's not the way. Yeah. So connecting to something which is inside of you, that's your DNA. Yeah. And you start from your DNA. And that's why it's so interesting because your DNA is growing all the time. And it's like, okay, you get more information and then you think, okay, my path is going to be like this or that. So interesting for me to find out that's also a way to do it. Yeah. I would think being mom or whatever, you cannot make any money. Where's the money? So, but in the end you can, yeah. because it's a more sustainable business model based on you instead of assumptions of people who studied for something, which is not you. In a way. I always believe like if you do something great uh, and you do it for a very long time, at the end there will be success at the end goal. True. Like uh, if you look at music but also like fashion, there's always a trend or there's always a certain day for a certain time. If you keep doing something that you are very focused on and you believe in for a very long time, 
Right. You find people and you find a group of people that will buy your product, listen to your music, your podcast, or whatever. True. So and that's the case. Yeah. yeah, but that's the case right now. Yeah. Because your audience is global. Yeah. So you can reach the whole world. Yeah. And that's the difference. And that's why I like it so much. Content, yeah. It's the difference between having your own, doing your own thing yeah. in an attic and then being very talented. Because I meet a lot of talented people. Yeah. And in a way, if you cannot like, okay, how can you grow into something and how can you open up to an audience? Yeah. Really nice. Yeah. I like it when I'm in Africa and I know exactly what you are doing or the guys of Daily Paper. I think it's really fun yeah. to talk to people about that. They say, oh, you're from Amsterdam. <gasps> we like it. So I'm like, oh, okay, cool. Yeah, it's great. It's great. Yeah, it's great to see. It makes me really proud. It's yeah. like, okay. I started this because of personal reasons. Mm -hmm. I was a designer doing production and product manager and managing uh, both design and buying departments. Mm -hmm. And I was approached a lot by headhunters in these days. So the first time they contacted you, we didn't have mobile phones. So they contacted you. Yeah. <laughs> so this, you cannot imagine. This yeah. feels like I'm from the Stone Age. It's yeah. like, but you did not. So you were, I was in a meeting in my office and they said, there's a phone call for you. And then they said, you know, I'm a headhunter and I'm, uh, well, we might be starting up something in Amsterdam. It's a big company coming okay, from the States. Yeah. Wow. And then they asked if they could have my private number. So, and I was like, okay, well, why not? Mm -hmm. In a way, I also felt a bit honored, like they found me. Yeah. How, did, how did you find some? How, how did you find me? Yeah. So then, I call, then they called me and they said, yeah, we cannot exactly say which company, but do you want to talk? I'm like, what's this? Is, is this a blind date? <laughs> so I said, but I have to know for which company. And I said, why? They're going to give you really good money and you can get a car. And I was like, but I want to know for which brand because, and they said, why do you want to know? I said, because I should connect to what I do. Yeah. And they were like, why? Because, and then they called me back, like, we can triple your salary. I said, it's not about the money. It feels, yeah. but it felt really stupid from my side as well. It's like, <laughs> I could get a lot of money, but I don't want that. Yeah, could, yeah. No, because I wanted to know what it was for. And I also wanted to know if it, that would be something for me. So, okay, then they said, yeah, okay. And then I got a lot of, of these calls, mm -hmm. which was the second call was already annoying. And the third call you think, whatever. Yeah. I'm this woman with a lot of money here because I'm responsible for both buying and design. They don't want me. They just want someone who can do the job. Mm -hmm. So I thought, why don't I start an agency? which at least helps people to find their inner thing on what they really connect and help them find jobs, assignments and do these things. So I started, I'm like a headhunter, but I don't like the word headhunting because I'm not hunting. I will ask people yeah. and this is what I like. And I'm a matchmaker, so I can, I already found out before that by managing teams, I don't, I'm not, the one who will sit in your chair of what you have to do, but you know exactly what you have to do. But I'm the glue between all these things and I can make one and one three. Mm -hmm. So I can present this and I can make you like, okay, how can you get the best out of you yeah. and challenge you? So I thought if I can start an agency and then in the, well, in the ideal world. Around what time was that? That was 1996. And uh, yeah, this yeah. is before everyone was born who's listening. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, but it's fun. And uh, then I thought, okay, let's start this. And, and immediately people would ask, oh, do you see HDNK New York? And I would say, you know, I'm going to start in Amsterdam. And the world is my playground anyway, because yeah. that's how I felt already. So I can call people anywhere. We didn't have Skype also, so there's a lot of phone calls and a yeah. lot of bills. <laughs> yeah. But at the same time, it was also connected to a lot of people and finding out that I already had a huge network. So from day one, people thought, oh, okay, you're doing this. Yeah, you know, I need someone on this and that and that. So I worked for a lot of different companies. Yeah. Also a lot of brands who are based here and who are really, well, they became really big. 
So from G Star to Scotch and Soda to Tommy to anyone here. But I also worked from day one for Victor and Rolf, who were just the two of them. Yeah, did you have a lot of competition at that time? No, there was no one. Yeah, really so it was like uh, there were the old guys, the headhunters. Mm -hmm. Well, these were the ones who were at the canal in their well, suits, not connecting to anything which I thought was uh, interesting or at least what my world was yeah. like. And they immediately, of course, they said, oh, she's only for design because I'm, I can judge portfolios. Yes. But I, I do as much from day one, as much commercial as creative jobs. I always feel like creative people should be able to translate something commercially because in a way, if you sell one dress or 10,000, it's still you have to sell. Yeah. And the commercial people, they have to connect to creativity. And that's also very important and I think that's also something which should happen more often now.